Hey everybody, welcome to my progress report videos on how long my hair has been growing. It's gotten pretty long since COVID started. No, we're not going to be talking about that today. Today we're going to be talking about how do we build a loading animation like this in Squarespace. And you'll notice that little square, it might look familiar to you. It's because it is the favicon of all the default websites in Squarespace. So whatever you have up here, it will pull that into the loading animation. But of course, you can replace this with any image that you might want. So let's jump into that tutorial right now. All right, let's just talk high level about what is gonna be happening here. So pretend this is just our website. Obviously it's empty right now. What we want to do is add an element, ooh, not all caps. We wanna add an element at the top of our page. So it's gonna load very, like first, it's gonna be the first thing to load. And we'll just call this a div. And if we have an element, we can specify its height and width. So if I just say height 100 pixels and width 100 pixels, and let's give it a background of red, right? So we can see it. So this is right here, but instead of guessing the pixel width, we have this other value we can do. And so for our height, we can say V8, which means the viewport height. And then our width, we can say VW, which is the viewport width. So this is gonna take the full width. Now there are some weird things that happen in uh, code pen that you don't have to do on your Squarespace website. So we'll just reset these margins so we don't have that little white line right there. So this is now an element that is taking up the entire height of the entire screen. So what we want to do, so pretend this is our, the, pretend this is our loading page, that black background we saw when I first showed you the demo of what we we're doing. Then we can add a class dynamically through JavaScript that says once the page is loaded, then add a class to this element. And we're gonna give this class some properties of display none. So it's just gonna sort of remove it from the entire website. So that's what's gonna happen. First, we're gonna have an element that is gonna be styled to be the full height and width of our page. And it's gonna load right there. And so our user is gonna see it when they get to the page. Then after the page has loaded, once the page is loaded and we're all good there, or maybe after a certain amount of time has elapsed, then we're gonna add a class that says hide, and it's going to hide that element. So that's just generally what we're doing. So let's break that down. The first thing we have to do is build our HTML elements. So let's do that. All right, so here we are on my Squarespace website. So I have built out just this random page right here called Loading Animation. This is what I'm gonna use to test and build this out on. And then once it's built, I'm going to put it into the settings, uh, site code and all that, and it'll apply to every single page. But for right now, I'm gonna go hit this gear icon, advance, and I'm gonna put some of the code right here so it just applies to this one page. So we want two things really. We want the, the parent element that's gonna be the full width, the red of what we just saw, the full height and width of the entire screen. So I'm gonna say that. And I'm gonna give make this one an ID instead of a class because an ID, it's for selecting things with JavaScript. It's a lot easier to use IDs. So I'm gonna use an ID and we'll just call this WM uh, loading animation. How about, we'll do that. And then within that, I want the element that to be centered on the screen. That's the actually loading element, the animation thing. So I'm gonna call this a div and we'll just say class equals, we'll call this the loading graphic, right? And then within here is where we're gonna have our image with a source of what's the image source right there. So this is what our HTML looks like. Now I could write the styles in here, but it's kind of hard to debug and troubleshoot as I'm building it. So I'm not going to put the CSS styles right here between style tags. I'm gonna to go to my custom CSS area. I just need to remember these two things. Oh, hi, Eric. Um, so I am going to copy this and then I'm just gonna remember loading graphic. Remember one's an ID, one's a class. So we'll go back to our home, design, custom CSS, do, 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 make a bunch of space here. Now the first one was an ID and that was our WM loading animation. Since it's an ID, I'm using my hashtag. And then the other one was just a loading graphic. And since that one was a class, I'm using a dot because that's our notation if you're new to all this CSS stuff. If you're not new, I have an entire course that talks all about this, uh, and I think you would really enjoy it. So there, there is that. So remember, that HTML is there, but there's no content inside it, so we're not really seeing it on the page right now. But if I say, if I give our, our element, our WM loading animation, uh, let's just say height 
of 100 VH, viewport height, width, oop, you can already sort of see something's happening right now. So now it's just, it's just an empty line that's 100 viewports height, the 100% the height of the viewport right there. And width of 100 VW, the width, now it is right there. And let's give it a background of red just so we can see it. So there it is. This is sort of just like what we had before, but it's not over everything. And also I can scroll. I don't really want that either. So the way we can do that is by, let's give this a, a position fixed, and that's going to fix it on top of the screen. But right now it is behind all of these other elements. That's the problem. And so we want to give this a Z index, which is, you know, X's left and right, right? Y is up and down and Z is forward, closer and back. And all of this, this red element that we just built is behind all of these, what you see on the page right here. So I'm just gonna give it a Z index and give it a really high number so it pops up. So there we go and you can see as my little scroller moves up and down right now, we're not seeing any other content. Even though this is only as tall and as wide as the screen, my screen right here, even as I scroll over, it's fixed on top of everything. So that's sort of what's happening right now. And then we have this loading graphic. So let's add in a loading graphic just so we can, or let's just, uh, let's just give this, let's just say uh, height is 100 PX, width is 100 PX. And then let's say background is black. So that's where it is right now. Not what we want, we want it centered. So this is where Flex comes in. If you don't know Flex, it's fantastic. I will be talking about it in my course. I haven't talked about it yet. This is a big, a lot to talk about there, but this is some great stuff. So rem notice that I'm selecting the parent container. So that's this red box right here. And I'm adding a display of Flex on it. And now all the children items, I only have one, but all the children items, so this one right here, is going to be flex. I can flex it around. And then within the parent right here, I can add these other properties called align items. This is a fun one that's gonna center it vertically. And then justify, justify content. And the way I remember that and do center as well. And there we go, so we have a perfectly centered element. Uh, and the way you can remember these, I just remember that there's two align items and justify content, but sometimes it's hard to remember which one does vertically, which one does horizontally. Justify, just think about the text. If you text, if you justify text to the left, then it's gonna be on the left. Justify text on the right, it's gonna be on the right. So justify works horizontally, and the other one, align, goes up and down. So that's just kind of how I remember that. Okay, what else do we have? So now this general setup is there. We wanna add one other class here. So. I'm gonna select our loading animation. Remember what I said at the beginning, we wanna add a class to this parent element right here that is going to make it delete. So I'm gonna select our loading animation and then add in another, we'll just say, let's say when it has the class hide, then it's gonna be display, display none. And now if I add this just to show you if let's just say it was on this one, it, nothing's gonna be there. It's gonna be totally removed. So that's what this display none property does. So I'm gonna add it right here. And notice I'm adding this class of hide to that parent element. And so there's not a space here. It's just all sort of connected in one long line. So that's, that's why there's not a space right there. So display none. So that's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna add this and maybe hide Maybe some other CS elements are using this, this hide value for their class. So maybe I'll just say hide animation to make it a bit more specific as to what hide is referring to. Okay, so there, there's the general structure. Let's sort of jump in to the JavaScript of it all. All right, had to take a little coffee break, but I'm back. So let's go to pages. Let's grab our loading animation and jump into the code here. Remember, I'm gonna put the code in our advanced section just on this page right now, so it's only applying to this page. And then later, I will add it to the entire site, so it's happening to the entire site. So, because we're writing JavaScript, we're gonna use our script tags. Now, anything between these two script tags can be JavaScript. Everything in here has to be rendered as HTML. That's why we've got to use these right here. Uh, if you want to know more about that concept and why, guess what? I have a course.
Okay, four things we want to do. The first thing we want to do is grab the little favicon that's up here in our website. And that favicon is actually in the code of your website. So we can jump in and grab that. And then insert it into what I have right now is that black box. So we're going to grab that favicon, insert it in there. Next, we need to add a function that says once the full page has loaded, remove this page. We don't need this red page right here. Just remove it. But sometimes that might not work. Maybe something gets stuck on your page and it's just constantly loading. And then we have this big red page, this loading animation that stays there. So we don't want that. So we want to set a fail safe, like a backup. That's just a timer that says if the page hasn't fully loaded in like a second or half a second, then just remove it. And, but also we might want to have, there might be a fun little animation we have that also says we want to play this animation for a little because what if your page does do what we want it to do and it loads super, super fast, right? And But so the animation is just sort of like, it's like doop, doop, really fast. That's sort of a weird loading experience too. So maybe we want a minimum amount of time we want our loading animation to run. So those are the four things we're gonna build. So let's jump into the first, which is grabbing the favicon and moving it into our element right here. So first things we wanna do, let's just sort of set a variable that says, um, all right, so I'm gonna be straight up with you here on the JavaScript part. I was just explaining the entire installation process for the JavaScript and then I realized I had a huge bug in the code. So I had to go back and fix that. And so what I'm gonna do now is just paste in the result and I will play it for you and then we will, so paste, what is my paste button? Ooh, I hit refresh instead, wrong button. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna paste it in right there. So this is it, and now I will show it, and then we will explain the result. So it waits, and then it loads. So that's what is happening. So let's break it up in those, into those four chunks I talked about. The first is adding in here, in our image element, this URL, this, this image icon right there. So what we're doing, we've created a function right here, and these three parts, one, two, three are within that function. The first part is creating a variable that grabs our link element with the, the attribute relation equals shortcut icon. Now, if you go over here, that is in our elements tab right here at the top in our header. And this head element gives the browser specific information about the website. You can see we have this link element right here with the, uh, with the, attribute relationship equals shortcut icon. And the href of that is whatever image we have right up in here. So whatever you have on your computer, that's what's gonna be there. So next we have our URL that grabs that element and selects the href. So now this URL has that href value. So whatever string that is, it has it. And then we're setting it. So we're going into our, our WM loading animation element right here and then we're selecting the image element within it because there's a space, and then we're setting the attribute to whatever that URL is. So that is what this first part is doing. Next, right here, we have our hide animation. So this is what I was talking about earlier when we have this, this other class up here that says class equals hide animation or whatever, class equals hide animation. So this is going to, this is what this next part of the JavaScript doing. It's a function that grabs our loading animation element right up here at the top and then in the class list adds its hiding animation. So that's what this next part is doing. So I'm gonna delete this because we don't need that up there. And then finally, this is the most complex, but let's just break it down. So first, we are setting a minimum amount of time. So we don't want to hide this animation. Remember, this doesn't run unless we invoke it right here. And same thing up here. This function won't run unless we invoke it right there. And so this hide animation, looks like I have it twice. This hide animation right here is only gonna run when right here when we invoke it or here when we invoke it. So first, we have this timeout and this first timeout is saying, let's wait a certain amount of time before we make any changes, before we do anything. So that's what all of this is doing. So we're waiting 1500 seconds right here because that is within here. We're waiting, I'm sorry, 1500 milliseconds. And then after that, we're running these two functions right here and right here. So the first one is a sort of our fail safe, our backup. So this is saying, let's wait 1500 milliseconds and then let's wait another half millisecond 
if the page hasn't loaded yet, let's just get rid of that animation because maybe something's wrong. Maybe other things are taking up loading. We don't want this animation to be like 12 seconds. That's going to be a terrible user experience if the page is loading real slow. So let's just get rid of it, cut our losses and jump into the page. The second is an interval that checks to see if the ready state of the document, if the page has loaded, if it's complete, then we hide the animation and we stop our interval. But you see, this is going to be checking every one tenth of a millisecond. So that is what this final one is doing. So this is just our code. That's just me explaining it right there. Uh, and let's just hit save so you can see it work. One two and then it pops away. So there we go. So now the last piece is let's make this loading animation look really nice using our CSS and give that little pulse effect using CSS animations. All right, so now let's give it that animation and we can do that, that little pulsing effect I showed you at the beginning. So we can do that back in our custom CSS area. So I'm gonna go to design custom CSS and we're going to add an animation. If you are unfamiliar with animations, this will be relatively new, obviously that kind of is a redundant statement, but uh, I'll try and keep it really simple so you can understand what's going on. So first we're going to create animations. The way you write animations is through this keyframes, keyframes property. Uh, and this is actually a, uh, this is similar to our media queries. I forget exactly what these are called, uh, but we're going to give it a name and we're just going to say, let's just call it pulse, right? And then within this, we can invoke this animation, this keyframe animation within whatever element we want. Um, and we create the different keyframes. The timing of our animation can be anything. And so we don't put an exact time on our, within our keyframes here. We put percentages through whatever time we have. That probably is very confusing. So let's just start with an example. So I'm gonna say at 0% through the animation, we're going to change an attribute. And so I'm gonna change the, uh, we wanna do transform scale, scale, uh, we'll say 1.1. We're gonna grow it a little bit. And then maybe halfway through the animation, we want it to grow, go down to 0 0.9. And then at, oops, change this to halfway. So 50% of the way through the animation, we want it to move from 1.1 of its size down to 0.9 of its size. And then, or, nine-tenths of its size, 90% of its size. Then 100% through the animation, we want it to go back up to 1.1. So let me quickly show you what I mean. Now we can add this animation property to our loading graphic is what we want it to do it to, not our WM loading animation. So I'm also going to get rid of this. So it pops up and it's there. So we're gonna add three parts to this. So I'm gonna add my animation. I'm gonna give it the name. So this is just a regular CSS property that's added to an element pulse uh, over three seconds. Ease, we're gonna give it a timing function, ease in, out, and infinite. So we want it to just run infinite. How do you spell infinite? Infinitely. So now it's just gonna pulse up and down infinitely. So you see, since I've added three seconds, that's why we have percentages here. So I can also add this in animation to here and just say one second maybe. So this is the entire element. And notice how this is moving a lot faster than this one. And that's just because we have a, just a different time right here. So that's why we have these percentages within keyframes, because you can use it on multiple elements here. But we obviously don't want it here. That looks pretty weird. So we're going to turn that off. So there we go. So that's how you do it. That looks bad, so we don't want that to be the case. Um, let's change some of these around just to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm going to say hashtag 999 to change the background color a little bit. Um, we actually don't want this to have a background, and we don't want this to have a height. We want this that element to be centered in it. So there we go. That's kind of that's kind of it. That's how you build our loading animation for any Squarespace website. You just paste on this code, it'll automatically pull whatever you have in here, the favicon in there, and it'll work. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I have a CSS course if you wanna learn any more about CSS, animations, all that stuff. Um, I have a course that goes over a lot of it, and I'm adding more to it every day. So I hope this helps. Take it easy.